Hi, we're Art and Bree. Four years ago, we left the city to buy a 100-year-old farm to turn it into our own productive homestead where we can grow our own food, build a healthy life, and raise our kids just how we like. If you want to join us in our homesteading adventure on our small farm, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, this recipe here is about... Okay, you can use two of those one, the first ones you showed me. I'm laying in bed still sick. I was like, day three? But it's so sweet because Arthur's out there making muffins with the boys, reading them the recipe, telling them which size um, measuring cups and spoons they should use. It's so sweet. I'm done, Dad. Do this. Do this. I'm done. Dad, I'm done. All right, first time making muffins? Good work. Great job, Justice. Yummy. Is that a good muffin? Yeah. That's a doggy. Oh. Sorry, that's not very nice. Her feet is out here and she's just standing there staring at it. I'm gonna throw this out here in the middle. To try, uh, to try to get them away from the fence. I've got some pretty big animal moves today and also <clears throat> for one getting the bowl back together with the cow but primarily getting all of the ruminants off this pasture and all the way out to the back pasture because the guy's coming to actually knock down some of the weeds in this pasture with his big fast mower today. He can do it in a couple hours whereas it would take me um, a whole day with a weed eater. I'm just waiting for her to finish her feed before I let the bowl back in with all of them. The bowl wasn't separated because he's crazy. He was separated because I was out of town and Bree was in charge for two days, three days. And I didn't want her to have to get in with the bowl over and over and over with no other adult out here. Okay, she's done with her food. We can let these animals back together. I hear ya. Okay, bud. He's sniffing her. Par for the course. He's following her. Par for the course. And the final step is the nose curls. The nose curls. Yep. What I'm watching for is that he's not mounting her over the next 15 or 20 minutes as I prep the back pasture because I'm putting them on the whole, well half the back pasture and both sides have steep sections. So what Bree and I will do is check the calendar, find out the day that she's gonna go back into heat and then one or two days before that we'll pull them off the back pasture and put them back here where it's more flat so she doesn't get hurt again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link a video up here. It looks good back here. This is our little back pasture. They're gonna go back here for a little while until she gets through her next possible heat and then they'll be back out here for probably two more weeks after that. All right, this is why I brought the chainsaw. This old dead pine tree is just sitting on the fence here. It looks like it just popped off one insulator there, but amazingly it didn't break any of the wire, so. This is covered with poison ivy. Fortunately, I have a pretty high tolerance to poison ivy. I mean, I just don't really get it. Unless I just really get into it. This one's actually broken. I didn't realize that. I need to see if I can find another insulator down the hill. Okay, that section of fence is off the ground. About nose height for a cow, and that's enough. I'm just walking now to see if there's anything else. 
that needs to come down. Next, I've got to divide this pasture in half. And just attach it. I kept hearing the sound of a mower coming from towards the house. And I thought, is, is that him? He's mowing the yard as well. And I thought, nah, that's the neighbor. And then I just saw a cloud of like mowing dust come up off my yard and I thought, no! But I'm definitely not ready back here. So I've gotta finish this actually in a hurry now. All right, I gotta insulate this back into this wire and attach it to the fence. And in order to do that, I'm gonna, and then just um, tie it onto this live wire here. Okay, now I've gotta get all these fences and wires out of the interior of this pasture and get the animals back here. Joy just told me, she just came out and told me that the guy's not here mowing. And I stood there just stumped for a minute. I was thinking of what are the possible things I could have seen coming up out of our yard. It looked like that dust, that, you know, moisture, like when you mow in the morning, you have this plume. And, and I said, did mom let you build a fire? And she said, yep. <laughs> so the kids built a fire in the yard. It's like their number one request. Can we build a fire? Can we build a fire? Today's story for me, has taken a really crappy turn. Um, the baby has come down with whatever GI bug Bree has, and so I've been involved with his care <coughs> several times in the past few minutes and haven't gotten back out to the pasture yet. The baby's actually still feeling pretty good. Apparently he's running in the yard with his siblings but Brighton is passed out right here on the couch. He just curled up and went to sleep. If Brighton's not up and about, that means he's sick. Yeah. Because he fights naps, he fights them every day. He never takes a nap, really, <laughs> unless you make him. We make him. I know, he just passed out. He's not, he doesn't feel good. And you've not been really able to do solid foods, but you're drinking some. I'm making myself drink some electrolyte drink. Because I was getting really dehydrated. But it really painful to drink it. Hey, guess what? I have some bad news for you. It's nap time. But I want to go outside. I know you want to go outside. But you actually need to rest. So you can get well really soon. Put that right there. Alright, buddy. It's nap time. Lay down and I'll rub your back. There's really nothing like that. I'm not about to be able to keep up with Bree's cooking prowess and productivity. Plus, several people actually aren't even eating. Thus, the big reveal. Hi. My new cooking invention. The Reuben cracker sandwich. Summer sausage, cheese, and sauerkraut. It's a little bit of a mouthful. But it's worth it. Time to kick all these animals out to the back pasture. Let's start with these two, with the two calves. Come on, let's go. You can hardly get him, you can hardly herd him at all because he's so gentle and calm. I mean, come on buddy, let's go. He's just like, oh, thanks for the pat. Come on, let's go. Let's go. She'll walk away from me, let's go. Come on, let's go. But first, fine, I'll wait. I know, I know. All right, let's go, bud. Come on. Get out. There you go. Come on, let's go. <laughs> the bull and the cow and four goats are chasing this bucket. The calves don't care. Uh. 
some extra. I'm gonna pour some out for those goats. Come on. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. It's fun to turn them out here because there's a ton for them to eat out here. It's really grown up. Lots of weeds, but lots of grass as well. The calves are wondering where everybody went. And Mama's talking back to them. They'll find you up here, don't worry. They will find you. sound of her voice. You'll find her. You'll figure it out. The kids are going to take all those bins down into the barn. Okay, the pasture's clear and ready to be mowed. Oh, well, pretty clear. I just need to tie the back fence where I put the cows into the electrified wire here. It's not on, but it will be soon. We'll open the door for her. There's your mama. Okay. Bree's resting, Brighton's resting with her, baby's sleeping, yard's prepped. I'm gonna run to town because I actually don't have any cash and I forgot to get it to pay this guy who's coming out to mow. But I wanna get back before the baby wakes up because he wakes up super clingy and Brianna's like achy all over and just miserable. Oh, by the way, a pro tip for dads, if you run out of desitin, natural sunscreen works just about as well because it's just chock full of zinc oxide. I'll be in the garden just a couple <clears throat> Okay, all is well. Guys are here mowing the yard. Bree is sleeping. The kids are watching a show for a minute. I'm gonna do just a couple little yard things real quick. I start by doing some weeding in areas that the guys who are mowing couldn't reach with their weed eaters. They did a really good job staying far enough away from all my plants. And that would be pretty quick criteria for someone not coming back if they couldn't pay attention to the plants. So I weeded around all the blueberries and then realized that I should actually transplant two of them because I'm afraid they'll have to move when I do the grading anyway and I don't want to be rushed on that day and digging at plants and moving them. So I moved two out of four that needed to be moved. Then the kids joined me and helped me weed around the apple trees. And my little work period was done. And it was more like leisure than work. I really enjoyed it. All right, I'm gonna move my truck so you can swing. Two days ago, Wilder got stung by a bee for the first time ever. You got stung, right? I got stung by a moth. He says he got stung by a moth. <clears throat> he got stung by a wasp. Oh, that's what he said. 
Not only did he get stung by one wasp, he got stung by two wasps at the same time on both knees. I'll show you how that happened. So we're coming up here to not just take revenge, but get rid of him so it doesn't happen again. Because they're right up in a spot where the kids play. They're actually in this shoe shelf. What happened though is he was on the porch playing with the other kids and he was standing in front of it and he popped it open and they came straight out and to his knee height and stung him on each knee. And I heard him scream up here. I've never heard him scream quite like that. Just bloody murder screaming. So I ran up and Joyful had rescued him. I will say as soon as the band-aids landed on those knees though, he settled down really fast. Band-aids do a lot of good for a little kid. Let's peek up in there and see if we can actually see him because I can't see him from where I'm at. I'm sure they're up above here. Huh, oh there they are. I was expecting a bigger nest. It's a clear satin finish. And uh, just one little pop of it and this will be over. They don't actually die immediately, they, they actually, but they're immobilized. They can't do anything. It doesn't kill them as fast as... And some of them are, there's another nest up in there actually. All right, that's it. There's, they're, they don't die like they do with with uh, bee spray, they die like that fast. Almost just In just a minute, they wind down and die. But they do die, and they do not fly again once you hit them. They might flutter to the ground, but that's it. All right, we got the bees that stung you, buddy. You can come up here now and not worry about Wanna it. Want to look at them? How strong do you like your ginger tea? I don't know. Are you having a lot of knives? I have to pick up the boards that I laid down as tracks through the muck for the mower. Down, my dad right in my and close the gate because the goats will rotate between pastures because there's only two strands. I love you, Dad. Dad, this is my dad. I love you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's your dad. The pasture looks great. And it looks great in kind of a sad way because it's just a sign that, that I wasn't successful in continuing through the whole summer with rotational grazing. I did great for the first half and then got really thrown off when we went to the beach, ended up just letting them go free and that, and I had quit moving them maybe two weeks before that. And anyway, it got out of hand again, but this is the reset I think it needed. Perf professional grazers would frown on this, but they also have hundreds of cows and, and they, um, there's a pressure and dynamic there where they really, eat more weeds and we I have not been able to replicate that with one cow even when I rotated her daily and I think it's just because I would have to put her on a like a small living room size plot per day maybe smaller to get her to eat those weeds she was so unhappy like that yeah and I've not been willing to do that yeah so we're gonna basically hold the cows off this as long as possible if I have to feed him hay in the back pasture, which actually would probably benefit the back pasture, I'll do that. Are you feeling better or just tired of laying in bed? I guess my back starts hurting laying in bed so long. Yeah. I can't believe I've been sick so many days. I'm never sick this long. I'm usually just like sick for a day and I'm done. <clears throat> it usually like hits me hard and I'm over it. <laughs> it's so nice to have community now that people will bring us a meal when we're having a hard day. I know. It's for three years we felt kind of isolated and not sure if this would even work living out here. And then really in the past year and a half, Thank you. we've made so many connections and so many They're friendships best. have grown. One of our friends brought us two chicken pot pies today. Someone who lives just over the mountain. When a mother 
makes extra food for another family and then drives it to them and drops it off. And I'm not saying that that means women shouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is that to me, whenever I do that, I feel like it's this Herculean effort and it means I really love you and I really want the best for you. So I'm always so blessed whenever someone does that for us because I know how much effort it takes for a woman <clears throat> to add that to her day on top of her own family life and farm life and to-do list. Bullshit. <gasps> the bullshit. That's what a bull says? Yeah. What else does a bull say? The bull's hut. <laughs> what are you talking about? Guys, thanks for joining us. I've had a great time today, even though it didn't turn out like my ideal day to start with, and I didn't get anything done in the house, but it actually turned out to be a really nice day, and we got a lot done, I would say, in connecting with each other and interacting well with each other and um, having some fun. And, and we got a little work done in the yard. So it's been another great day in the homestead and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. He hears me start the ending of the video and he's like, oh, I want to get out there. And he comes out and says, see you on the, or another great day in the, it's so sweet. You're into that last shot, aren't you? Bye. It's been another great day he's in the homestead. He's actually a big vlogger. Do you see what happens when I put my camera down?